I'm Ali today. I'm going to read you a story called Grandparents Day. Are you ready to listen? Okay, I'm going to read you the story. Grandparents Day. Chapter One. Getting to know you. It was Grandparents Day at Plunkett Street, Plunkett Street. All the students had invited their grandparents to visit school. Miss Fazio was working hard to make sure her classroom was big and span. Pens and pencils in her trays, bits of paper in the bin, book back on the book back on the shelf, bales away neatly. She pointed in all directions, and Miss Fazio added with a loud double clap of hands. I want everyone to be on their best behavior. Awesome! cried Nelson. Do you hear me, Nelson? Quizzed Miss Fazio, a little confused. Yes, Miss said Nelson with a big grin. Well then, said Miss Fazio, let's bring in our guests. She opened the classroom door and popped her head out in the hallway. Please come in, she said warmly. A line of nervous but curious grandparents shuffled into the classroom. Bruno, Bruno. Bruno's grandparents were so tall he almost hit his head on the door frame. Ming's grandmother was so small she 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 was only slightly bigger than Ming. Welcome to our wonderful class," announced Miss Fazio. "We've been looking forward to your vi- forward to your visit. Please take a few few moments to say hello to each other and have a look around. The children have." I have been work working on lots of interesting things to show you. What did she say? Asked Ra- Rahib's grandfather loudly. Her month moved a lot, but I, I didn't catch a word. Word. Rahib went red. Grandpa, do you have your reading aid turned off again? Rahib reached up and felt with his device on the grand grandfather's ear. Suddenly, his grandfather's eyes lit up. That better, he smiled. Leon's grandmother smoothed them with kisses. Leon tried to squirm out after pigeon hug, but she already held him tighter. Bruno's grand grandfather admired the view on the window. Mouse's mouse grand grandfather found a sunny spot and read an old newspaper he had found in the art bin. Haley's grandmother laughed and pointed at the artwork on the classroom wall. Brooks and Beatrice's grandparents whispered to each other as their granddaughters led them around the room. Ruby's grandfather refused to wear his glasses. I don't need them. He grumbled. He was bumping into everything, and Ruby had to tell him what he had called it each time. Are you sure it's a chair, Rubes? It looks a lo- lot like the flower pot I said in the last week. I don't want to end up with more like spikes in my bottom. I'll I'll get your glasses," sighed Ruby. Nelson subscribed. Nelson's grandfather seemed very uncomfortable. He squirmed in his seats, just like Nelson. They sil- they silently squirmed next to the- each other. Remember, children," said Miss Fazio, raising her voice about about the bin. This may be a good time to ask your grandparents what school was like when you were young. He asked her grandmother what school had been like. The old woman smiled warmly and just la- laughed and laughed. Miles, Miles' grandfather had fallen asleep and was snoring. The drone on the grandfather's snuffs and snorts. Miles started and take. Talking very loudly about the weather with Nelson, just ducking out for a minute, announced Miss Fazio. No one in the classroom looked any no- notice. When Miss Fazio left, they also didn't notice Ruby's grandfather lit the lid on the frog pan at the back of the room. Chapter two: Break out with the glasses. Ruby, without his gra- glasses, Ruby's grandfather didn't see. The sign in bold red letters: "Attention, Life Cycle pro- pro- Project Tank. Leave frog- frogs inside. Do not remove the lid without teacher permission." He thought the frog tank was a bin. He lifted the lid, dropped in his dirty tissue, and wandered away. 
No one saw the frogs escape from the tank, but soon after, Nelson was Nelson Nelson saw something flying to the fly through the air and land in perfect gray hair of Ming's grandmother. Frog! Yelled Nelson, who was jumping out of his seat and pointing. Ming's grandmother wondered why a scruffy young boy was yelling and pointing at her. She reached the path to her hair in the place. She felt something cool, something slimy, something moving. Ah! She screamed, Get it off me! Get it off me! Ming grabbed the frog and Miles checked the tank. All the frogs were missing except for bubbles. He cried, And fast though, standing, referring to the into the frog she had now tucked under her armpit out of the sight. He and his grandmother laughed so much that he wanted to hide too. Ozzy was the Bruno's grandfather pointing under the table. He bent down to grab the animal. Can you reach grandpa? asked Bruno. No, I need a young person to back that, said Bruno's grandfather. Ow! Bruno helped him. Grandfather to a chair next to Miles's Miles' grandmother, who was still snoring. What do you call a woman with a frog on your head? asked Bruno's grandfather. Lily! Bruno's grandfather crackled on the own joke as he scooped on the frog that had now leaped on Miles' sleeping grandfather. That's loopy, said Miles. Just then, his grandfather woke up. Who are you calling Loopy Lad? He growled. This is Loopy, said Bruno, pointing to the frog in grandfather's hands. He and his grandmother got the hiccups from her laughing. And found another one, said Nelson. Nelson's grand grandfather scooping a frog out of Miss Fazio's pop plant. That hobby, said, said Nelson. Nelson's grandfather crept up behind Heeny's a loud ah hiccups gone now he smiled chapter three finding flip flop here's jumpy said holly holding up another frog she was on the bookshelf now we just have to find flip flop said brooke and beatrice together he's my frog cried rahib i raised him from a tadpole we can't lose flip flop don't worry, Rahib, we'll find him, said, said his grandfather. I just need every, everyone to be extra quiet. The classroom fell silence. Rahib's grandfather turned his, his hearing aid up as loud as it would go. He began to scan the room with his ears. He walked two steps toward the whiteboard. Can you hear him? asked Rahib in a whisper. Shh, said his grandfather. Turned and walked three pe three paces toward the black back of the classroom. Is he close by? Whispered Rahib. Shh! Repeated the grandfather. He edged his way slowly between the desks, this, turning his head from side to side. Suddenly, his ears locked onto a sound. He quickly scored over the ruby grandmother who was trying to sharp, sharpen a pencil. They don't make pencil sharpers like they used to, sighed Ruby's grandfather. That's because it's a frog, gasped Ruby. Flip flop, cried Rahib. Ruby's, Ruby's grandfather had a firm hold on the on the frog. Its back legs were jerking and kicking out him from her mouth in the pencil. A frog? Really sorry about that, said Ruby's grandfather, handing over Flip Flop. Chapter 4 Best Behavior All the frogs were returned to the frog tank, and Rahib made sure the lid was on properly. properly. After the excitement on the escaping frogs, everyone felt much more relaxed and friendly. Nelson's Grandfather held a short lesson on how to make super fast paper planes. Leon's grandmother wrote some math puzzles in the board. I always dreamed of being a teacher, she said. Heaney's grandmother stood at the, at the front of the class and sang her old school song. By the time Miss Fazio returned, 
the room was humming. Morning tea is ready, she announced, but no one paid any attention. Miss Fazio tried again. Er, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Everyone, everyone carried on except the Leon's. Leon's grandmother. Quiet, everyone, she boomed. Miss Fazio has something to say. Miss Fazio was slightly pink. Thank you, she said. I just wanted to let everyone know that morning tea is ready outside and there is the cake. Cake, cried the grandparents, and they all rushed up to the door at once. The class stood back and watched their parents fill their mouths, laugh, and talk. Some of them did all three all at the same time. Ruby only saved, only just saved her grandfather from eating a plastic cup. Not a cupcake? Yeah, surprised. Ruby shook her head. Can you please wear your glasses now, Grandpa? She begged. No, I don't need them, sweetie. He said and elbowed into his some food. Ming watched the morning tea disappear before her eyes. Do you think they've been on their best behavior? She asked. Openly, Ming sighed. Ruby, Grand Grandpa has definitely been one on his best behavior. Mine too, added Nelson. You should have heard the stories of what he had gone into. He was at school. I've got some great, I, great new ideas to try out here. Nelson's grandfather gave gave his grandson a huge open mouth smile with a mouthful of cake. What am I, Nelson? What am I? He asked. A crumbs flew out everywhere. A frog with a mouthful of food laughed. Nelson. Everyone joined in. Miss Fazio, but no one laughed louder than his grandmother. Wow. Their grandparents. Wow. Grandparents at school. Mm, what would be like? I never had my grandparents grandparents at my school. Huh, that's weird. But my mom and dad has, has been my school class before, but not my grandparents. I can't understand. Well, I think this Plunkett Street school is different than, than, my, than our school. Okay, this is the end of the story. Okay, and how do you feel this? Um, this story was a little fun, and their grandparents were real, real fun. Well... Well, Ruby, I guess Ruby's grandpa can't see well without his glasses. Yeah, I think so. Okay, and thank you for seeing this video. Bye!